situation tonight, but say, touch me, because all it takes is one touch. What I have right now is not a need. What I have right now is an emergency. See, if I had a need, I could go a little bit more longer with what the need. I could go a little bit wilder with the need, but when it's an emergency, I need God to show up right now. You can't afford to lose a, a minute. You can't afford to lose a, a second. God have mercy. All I need is one touch. All I need is one touch. Stand with me tonight. All I need is one touch. Musicians, you can play softly. All I need is one touch. I don't know what your emergency is tonight, but I know this, that there's a doctor in the house. I said, I don't know what your emergency is tonight, but all I know is that there's a doctor in the house. Dr. Jesus is on call tonight. Dr. Jesus is on call tonight. The great physician is here. The bomb in Gilead is here. And the good news is, ladies and gentlemen, hear this. You don't have to make an appointment tonight to see this doctor. One of the greatest things about the doctor, about Dr. Jesus, he's not afraid of hard cases. As a matter of fact, the harder the case you have, it's the better it is. Because God wants to do something for you. That when it's done, my sister, there ought not to be a doubt that it's God who did it. Your situation that you think is going to kill you right now, God says because when you give it to me, I'll take care of it. Because there ought not to be a doubt that when God heals you, there ought not to be a doubt that he healed you. The doctors are going to be baffled. The nurses are going to wonder who touched you. And you're going to say, it's Jesus. It's Jesus that touched me. Doesn't matter how bad it is. Doesn't matter how complicated your circumstance he is. He can handle it. He can handle it. It doesn't matter how long you've had it. It doesn't matter how long you've been living with it. It doesn't matter. Whoa. Jesus says, give it to me. Dr. Jesus wants it. Let him handle your situation. Lift your hands and praise him. In the book of John, I feel like preaching. I told you to stand. I'm trying to close up. But the Bible tells us in John chapter 5 about a man by the pool of Bethesda. Jesus healed him. He had been sick for 38 years. That's as long as, almost as long as I've been alive. 38 years he's been sick. When this woman reached Jesus, understand, she didn't have any more money. She couldn't pay the doctors. She didn't have any more money. She might have never had any more friends. Oh, good God of mercy. All she had, my brothers and sisters, was just a little bit of pain. Hallelujah. All she had was just some paper. All she had was just some paper that said, if I could touch him, if I could touch him, I know he's going to make me whole. Bible says that there are many people that was touching Jesus that day. He was surrounded by many people. His disciples were there. All kinds of people were touching him. And when this woman touched Jesus, something about her touch. There was something about her touch that was different from the others. <laughs> this touch wasn't as a touch to say I touched somebody famous. There's times that I go to the airport or wherever I'm at, I'm at a mall and I'm looking for famous people. And if you see somebody, you want to get a picture because you want to put it on Instagram so somebody can see you. 
I know they never had Instagram, but just imagine with me. There were many people in that crowd, mother, that was trying to touch Jesus so they could put it on Instagram back in the day. They were trying to touch him so they could get their five seconds of fame. But this woman, she came and she touched Jesus. It wasn't a famous touch. This woman, she deliberately touched Jesus. This wasn't a touch of by accident. She never stumbled on this. But 